Well, we have every reason to believe that quantum computing is the future, and we cannot ignore this uh, opportunity to influence it. And we were discussing on how we could do collaborations between the AI lab and the mathematical modeling group. And our expert in, well, we were thinking about quantum computing, and our expert in quantum computing said, hey, there is this company that is uh, developing this uh, commercially available quantum computer. And I thought, well, that's it. Yes, and uh, at that moment, Gustavo interrupted me and asked about the price. Well, the price was like $50,000, but come on, $50,000 for a quantum computer? That's nothing. And Gustavo said, ALAP can buy one. Let's do it. Exactly, let's do it. But before we, we started discussing which kind of projects and things we could do with this quantum computer, Laurence, the head of the department, she told us, wait, we could in fact buy a second one. And so here we are with the very first two Norwegian quantum computers. The first quantum computer of Norway. Oh, wow. Information units, in a, in a traditional classical computer, information is, is consisting of bits and pieces which are zeros and ones, long strings and ones and zeros. A quantum computer can have, have deals with information bits which can be either, it can be both zero and one at the same time in some sense, like the famous Schrödinger cat which is thought of as being dead and alive at the same time. Uh, and this has huge potential when you put such bits together because the potential information content of that go grows extremely quickly with the number of such quantum bits. And that's basically how a quantum computer uh, works. Let's think in a concrete example. It's a little bit futuristic, but let's assume that we have a certain patient in an hospital diagnosed with, with some uh, uh, cancer. Now, there are lots of data about this person and we could use this data to uh, put in some algorithm and to uh, decide what is the best therapy for it. A classical computer will need to run uh, sequentially all possible combinations of radiotherapy and chemotherapy and etc. So to use classical computer, the best way to do it in order that we can have a quick decision is to have lots of classical computers, each one exploring one possible combination. Then we can save time, but we will uh, 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 lose, let's say, in the computational cost. The idea of a quantum computer is exactly to try to do at once to have an algorithm that can explore all these possible combinations in parallel in one single step with one single quantum computer. And this is what we would like to, to do in the future. I mean, we uh, people working in quantum computing. Quantum computers, they should serve society. And it's very important for example for cancer treatment because medical decisions cannot wait indefinitely. It is important to update the treatments on the fly and quantum AI could help to handle big data describing the patient, his or her needs, and at the same time can mitigate the computational cost needed to find the solution. And if we think about using quantum computers, from technological point of view, we will face a problem, many of them problems, which classical computers do not have. So uh, actually constructing a quantum computer is really, really hard for many reasons. Maybe the biggest reason is the fact that isolating a quantum system from the rest of the world is, is difficult. It tends to get entangled up in whatever surrounds it and, and if that happens it loses its quantumness so to speak. Uh, so for this reason quantum computers tends to t tend to be really big, they tend to operate on really low temperatures close to the actual zero point and, and uh, they tend to be limited in the number of how many qubits they have. Uh, in our case our quantum computers are quite different because they're small, they fit on a tabletop uh, they kind of look like the computers we have had in, in, in the 90s, so to speak. And uh, they operate at room temperature. On the other hand, they're really, really limited in the number of quantum bits. The first one has two, the next one has three, so that's certainly a limitation. 
But uh, rigorously speaking, we could also say that no country is quantum ready. Of course, that there are countries like US and Germany that are much, much uh, ahead uh, than Norway from the point of view of quantum computing. And but still, okay, it's uh, we have two small quantum computers. It's true, they are the two first quantum computers in Norway. But we hope that this could be two small contributions to put uh, Norway in the right track to become quantum ready. So we got an important ingredient, a central part of our quantum computing infrastructure, and our students and researchers, they will have a unique opportunity to get a first-hand experience in quantum computing. Next, it is also a research platform because we can explore noisy intermediate scale quantum computing as it stands now and it's very different from those ideal quantum computers which are described in the textbooks. So we have every reason to believe that quantum computing will affect society for all of us in the near future. Uh, somehow this hasn't been fully realized in Norway whereas the rest of the Nordic countries actually have. So we hope we can change that. And we also hope that we can prepare our students for the new job market that will emerge. In fact, the, the demand is already larger than the, the supply in this regard. So we want to introduce them to the world of quantum computing. And we also want, as a benefit, to introduce them to the beautiful and strange world that is the quantum cosmos. Uh, one thing I really like about studying at Ruslmet is um, that the teachers uh, are giving us practical experience and the opportunity to try things out in, uh, in real life. Uh, like the quantum computer, uh, it's very different running things on a quantum computer in real life than uh, running it in simulations. Oslomed is the only university in Norway uh, educate programmers who also can learn uh, quantum computing and I believe uh, it prepares us for future job market and there are lots of exciting uh, job opportunities that lie there.